Hey, welcome to day 17 of 30 Days of Essential Oils. My name is Tammy Davis. I'm your mentor, guide, and neighborhood alchemist. For those of you just tuning in and joining me, thank you so much for checking it out. I'm really glad to have you here. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. Um, what you find in these videos is a little bit different than what you're going to find elsewhere. And then I also follow these up with blogs, or I am following these up with blogs, although they take a little bit longer for me to kick out. I'm in the process of a lot of um, <clears throat> changes going on um, in my world as far as what direction I'm taking next with regards to my career. So um, I still wanted to be with the oils. I'm just not sure. I mean, there's just, there's just a lot of transition. Anyway, so it's kind of like life happening. <laughs> anyway, I just appreciate you being here. And for those of you that have been with me this whole time, again, thank you very, very much. Sharing my life journey with you is um, very special. Um, I guess I want to say, I haven't said in the last couple of videos, what makes me an alchemist is um, besides the fact that I have a background in aromatherapy over 30 years at this point, um, as well as the study of the epigenome, plant constituents as they relate to human health and drug development, aka pharmacology. So there's a lot going on here, as well as nutrition, and I focus a lot on that. Um, I did record a couple of videos prior to this one for day 15 and 16 and I was going to jump into this one and I actually had to pause because I started feeling kind of poorly by the fact that I'm just really kind of I wanted to just, I, I realized that a lot of what I'm saying in these videos is minimal as far as the benefits of oils and so when I went out walking around and kind of doing some other things it really hit me as to why that is and so I thought I would just take a little responsibility here and explain that before I jump into today's oil, which is Cedarwood Virginian. Um, the purpose to, and I mean, I really was never even cognizant of it. I mean, I, I was and I wasn't. Um, but when you look at an oil, regardless if it's on a website or in a book, you're going to find a list of properties. And the concern with that is very simple in the sense that if someone's dealing with anxiety, um, and you can see that like with cedar wood, if they happen to have it around, they may use it because it says it's good for anxiety. But anxiety has a number of or various types of um, root causes. I mean, basically, and I do have um, a blog written about that, the chemistry of um, anxiety. You can find that link in the description box below. But what is causing the anxiety is really important. Um, and the bottom line, if we were just to kind of look at oils, if we just kind of looked at them at, 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 as stress, um, one of the most important things I can say about an oil or selecting an oil is when we identify what's going on, this is why it's always good to have a second set of eyes and ears to kind of hear the full picture of what's really happening in your system to be able to pinpoint the you know an, an accurate oil for you. Um, this doesn't come off of a website and it doesn't come out of a book. And like I said, if anxiety is an issue, it depends on what else is going on with that anxiety. Is there pain? Is there um, lack of mental focus? Is there um, digestive disruption? Is there you know are there signs of psoriasis or other skin conditions? So all of these kind of factor into the decision as to which oil, like I said, to pick. Um, so, but if we actually begin to pay attention also to the fact that all of these oils basically can do a lot of the same things. Um, I've, in the last few videos, I've talked about having, um, the opposite reaction occurring, you know, for instance, like cinnamon bark, like I mentioned, is supposed to be, have a calming effect on the body. However, depending on what your system is, where your epigenome is on that day, it might have the exact opposite effect. So again, a second set of eyes and ears really adds to the end result of um, how you um, overcome whatever you've got going on. And so I just wanted to make that disclaimer. That's the reason why I only pinpoint certain things that I've used it for. I'm not saying that mine's 100% right. What I'm pointing out is that these are how I've used the oils and um, whether or not it's a good fit for you, you can make that distinction to a certain degree, but please use caution. And if you ever have any questions or if you'd like a second opinion, 
then um, I, I'm your girl. I'm happy to help you. Um, but when it comes to cedarwood Virginian, now keep in mind there's different types um, and I chose Virginian because of its cedral content. Now cedar, um, cedarwood Texas also has cedral in it. Um, Atlas does not and the cedral component is what makes cedarwood a superb sedative and that's where I've used um, where I've used cedarwood. It also helps along the lines of the um, CBS um, genetic process with regards to the conversion of, uh, chemical conversion of cysteine. Um, if, if you don't have any medications in your repertoire of treatment, then you could also pair it with um, dill weed, possibly to really help with the methyl transfer, like I said, and the conversion of cysteine. It would be very beneficial for those um, for that process, but that takes um, understanding blending, which by the way, I have been talking about to this point about doing a blending series. I have 86 that idea. Uh, what I'm going to do is a blending class and I'm going to make, I'm making that announcement right here, right now. I'm putting it up. I'm going to be publishing information about that here shortly after I get finished recording this, but I am not going to do a blending series because it's, um, Blending is, a, is an art, and if I have to do it in a sequence of courses or classes, I will, workshop settings, I will, depending on um, the amount of people and the number of questions. But the way I want to structure it, I think, <clears throat> the, the way it feels right for me, is to structure it by having people bring their concerns, their questions, as far as their specific health issues. Um, that's how I would suggest it because at that point I can really, when you hear me talk about a specific health concern and we've done some dialoguing about what's happening, you'll begin to pick up what I'm suggesting. You know, if you've watched the video on cinnamon and even dillweed actually, more specifically dillweed, um, you will have heard me talking about how to blend um, with regards to blood sugar. So that's just one idea. So that's kind of be the sequence, the series, I mean that's not series or sequence, that's going to be the course that I'm going to be launching here shortly and you're invited to um, sign up for that. You're also, while well, I'm on a pause here on, on Cedarwood, I also have a newsletter that you can sign up for and you can also request to join my aromatherapy as a lifestyle program. Um, it's a closed Facebook group and the only reason it's closed is because I just don't want the information searchable on the internet. Um, but those of you who are in the group, you're always welcome to join um, and sign up for the blending program. And um, I'm really excited to be doing that. So that said, um, like I said, mentioned cedarwood and dill would be very good if, um, if the body's struggling to make the conversion to cysteine. Um, but for the, and that's, I've used it in that aspect. Um, a couple of times and um, as I mentioned also for um, for sleep because of the cedral content cedral actually has the ability to not just help you fall asleep it has um, the ability to help you maintain your sleep so that you if you have a problem with waking up in the middle of the night it <clears throat> it's been determined through research sleep studies that it'll actually help prolong your sleep at night and make it far more restful so making this a very good oil to be used for children um, in small amounts, of course, and um, because especially those who are happen to be excitable, um, it's really very grounding, um, primarily because it's a wood oil, but um, it's very, very grounding. So it's great for um, attention deficit, hyper, you know, ADHD, ADD, um, and sleep issues along those lines. However, you do not want to mix this med this oil with blood pressure medication. I kind of hinted at earlier that this oil, as long as there's no medications involved, then you can use cedarwood uh, virginian. But as I mentioned, um, only if you're not taking blood pressure medications because it has a significant impact on the autonomic nervous system. And you can tell that because of the way it does actually help to relieve anxiety, and it's very beneficial for helping to relieve a lot of systemic agitation. So um, they're still get looking into the components of a lot of oils, not just this one, but it does have the ability to kind of just 
stabilize the autonomic nervous system, in which case that'll stabilize the immune system. Again, we're, it's almost like a grounding, right? It's very much what it's like. If you look up um, properties, you'll notice that it's um, claimed to be good. And now we're talking about Virginian, you know, dermatitis, cystitis, UTIs, um, acne. <clears throat> Keep in mind, cedarwood has been used historically and to this day as uh, as a repellent. It also has a lot of and it and it um, so it keeps it's a repellent, but it also, believe it or not, actually has um, drying qualities to it. There's an astringent quality to it, which helps with um, that would be with the skin. It also has um, there's just a drying quality to it, um, very much like. Um, which is the oil I'm looking at for? Oh my gosh, forgive me. I think it's um, I think it's Cyprus. This is the word I'm looking for, and it would make sense because we're talking about different types of pine trees. So Cyprus has a drying agent to it. Now Cyprus is, as we discussed, very good for bedwetting. Um, however. I wouldn't recommend Cedarwood Virginian for that. It is very good though for helping to kind of dry up if you've got a phlegmy cough, if you've got, you know, um, congestion in the chest, as I mentioned also for the, um, for the different itises, the bronchitis, the cystitis, the dermatitis, it actually helps to dry those up so that the body can actually heal them. And I know that the cedrine in it, there's an alpha and a beta cedrine typically in Virginian that is also antimicrobial. So, but it, again, if, I, if we just come at it from the concept that it's very stabilizing to the autonomic nervous system, it also, at that point, it also stabilizes the immune system. Now, it's not a suppressant, okay, as it's not a stimulant. It's a stabilizer because once the body is stabilized, then it is better equipped to deal with any sort of um, microbial infestation <laughs> and, um, infection as well as other um, degenerative issues, immune issues that we are, you know, because, well, that are, again is also very beneficial for um, autoimmune reactions. I'll put it that way because as soon as the, auto, the immune system is stabilized, well, then you, um, you the body's no longer fighting itself. And it also, not to mention the fact, once you stabilize the autonomic nervous system, the body's better equipped to break down the macronutrients, again, serving and stabilizing the immune system. So cedarwood is actually quite good in that regard, especially since I promote an awful lot of stabilizing the body. Cedarwood Virginian would be one that you would want to use, again, but before, to be, to be clear, without medications, especially blood pressure medication. So um, that would be Kilo in the background. And um, I'm not sure what he's barking at, but that's my sign to sign off. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>